I've been studying for years now innovation and how we can actually incorporate our insights about how innovation happens into economic theory. What I was discovering was the state actively creating and shaping markets. The fact that we don't have a framework that talks about that with that kind of language. We only talk about the state regulating, administering, facilitating, not kind of being the lead investor. So I started looking at different examples of really radical and revolutionary innovation and found that in fact, you know, some of the most revolutionary investments and the most radical part of those developments actually were housed within the public sector. Have you ever asked yourselves why it is that companies, you know, the really cool companies, the innovative ones, the creative new economy type companies, Apple, Google, Facebook, are coming out of one particular country? Public sector funds have not only created the conditions for innovation, facilitated innovation, they have actually been in some ways the lead risk takers. Silicon Valley is an area which received massive amount of public funding, so all the technologies behind the iPhone were government funded, internet, GPS, touchscreen display, Siri voice activated assistant, and yet the public school system in Silicon Valley has gone down the drain. So, you know, public education, public healthcare systems, we need to think about them alongside innovation to have the full story of how to get um, inclusive growth. What really interests me, especially nowadays in, um, because of what's happening politically around the world, is the language that's used, the narrative. Uh, what I'm absolutely clear about is that the historic British mistake was for fund public funding for science and technology to stop too far upstream, leaving a gap. And we then beat up on ourselves that for some reason we weren't as entrepreneurial as other countries. The truth was that other countries, notably the US, were putting public funding into science and technology, taking it closer to market than we were. And my work on the eight great technologies with the Chancellor was also identifying technologies that had gone beyond the stage of pure science, but as significant general purpose technologies were still, still merited public support on their long journey to commercialization and the market. That crucial insight is something she explains very powerfully in her book. It's also the insight that lies behind the creation of the Technology Strategy Board, creating catalyst funds that for the first time link up funding from research councils and the Technology Strategy Board, so you've got a single pot of money all the way from the lab to the marketplace in a way that she calls for. It's been really encouraging to see how the work that I've been doing over the last uh, three years around this uh, topic, which I've called the entrepreneurial state, has been received around the world, both in terms of the media, from sort of lead newspapers in Israel and Brazil and Italy and the US and all over Europe talking about it, but also the engagement that I've had with sort of top ministries in about 20 different countries. Dr. Collins, I'm glad you brought up the book, The Entrepreneurial State. I was interested in the case the author makes that the federal government takes research risks that private investors would never touch. I think what Mariana has done is help shift perceptions of what happens in America. There's a kind of picture of the US as just pure free market doctrine when what she has done by very carefully analyzing that the way that tax reliefs work, the level of support from the National Institute of Health, the National Science Foundation, shows there's actually much more support, especially for technologies, general purpose technologies, that is sometimes recognized here in the UK. And I've been very encouraged by how open the discussions have been, because really my main point is you got to rethink the framework. It's not just about increasing another type of investment or changing this kind of tax scheme. It's about changing the way we understand the role of the public sector in economic growth, and they've been extremely receptive to that point. I think Mariana's strong voice for the entrepreneurial state and detailed exposition of what that means and what the evidence is for that is the beginning of an economic movement. It's just been really exciting because this, we're living in an era where nations are really trying to think about post-crisis recovery and being at the heart of that debate has just kind of felt great that my academic research can have that kind of impact. <laughs>